Yo, 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 what up? This is Scoozy, and I'm back with a brand new episode from the Lionheart server. And we got our derpy worm still. Um, so last episode, uh, we got pranked. <laughs> and then we were continuing work here on our giant serpent uh, that's, pardon the pun, snaking its way around our base. So I have a lot of it done now. Uh, we'll just come over here by this lovely pyramid and take a look. So this section is done, coming down off the book. Uh, this is where the head will be. And then if we can come up here, it's all the way around this way. And then even this side here, where it comes up from the ground and over the door of our base, it's all connected too. Um, you're going to have to forgive the shape. This is a, a tricky thing to build. I've never built anything like this before. Um, I did a squid once with some tentacles, but they were on a much smaller scale and a little easier to do. Uh, I mean, I guess it looks okay. And I think it will look a little better once we have all of this in. Uh, which brings me to my next point. Uh, I wanted some suggestions of what to use besides black concrete, because I think black concrete looks a little flat uh, in comparison to the sandstone uh, variants and all the different scale patterns that they create. So uh, a couple people suggested some things. Vitagarvia suggested coal blocks and I like coal blocks. It's got a good kind of scaly pattern, uh, but I've also been considering wool. And while wool isn't quite as good texture wise, it still does have some texture. It's not as flat as the concrete, but it's gonna be a lot easier for me to obtain. I mean, I get, I get some ink sacks, uh, go down, dye some of my sheep black, and in no time we'll have enough. Uh, whereas coal, I mined for an hour this morning because I don't really have any coal because I don't really ever mine. <laughs> and uh, after an hour, all I managed to get was this, uh, there's like, there was 11 here, so 70, 75, 75 blocks of coal. Uh, which I don't even think would be enough to do this whole snake. So... Then there's the, the top bits that have to be filled in. So yeah, I think I might go with wool, uh, and that's not uh, a job for today. Um, I'm going to have to dye some more sheep and collect it over time, but uh, we will get there. Um, I'm, okay, that was weird. I tried to eat carrots while also trying to fly. I got so much stuff in my inventory right now, you have to forgive me. Eh. Okay, so... Uh, I'm also not going to work on the head of the snake quite yet, uh, because what we need to do is determine where we're going to build uh, our villager breeder. So, like, this point right here, I think, should be where they are spit out. So, this is where the mouth of the snake will be pointing, right, right this way. Um, so, I mean, obviously we need to make... Uh, the villager breeder uh, in one of these two books and I haven't quite decided whether the bottom one or the top one will be the better option uh, because it does have to be within a certain proximity to your uh, census villager. Um, now if you, if you don't know anything about uh, villagers and how they operate uh, they're, they're a funny little bunch so they need doors um, in order to even consider themselves part of a village. Uh, but those doors don't have to be in any sort of um, village arrangement. They can all be in a small area. Uh, and then the villager that sits in there, he is the census villager. He's the one who's like, okay, we're in a village, but we don't have enough villagers. So he sends out a signal that any villagers that can read this should probably breed and make some new villagers. Now, the thing is, is you need to have him in a position where he sits and then the villagers that breed are far enough away that he can't see them. He can't ca like count them towards the villager total. And that's the way these, these whole processes work is that he's sending out the breeding signal. The ones down below are doing the breeding, but the guy sending out the signal has no clue that anything is happening. So he just keeps sending out that signal and those two just keep breeding. And then you take the, uh, the other villagers that are being produced and you cart them off to your trading hall, which we're going to put over there. So I'm thinking that if this is where the head of the snake is, this platform here would be a decent place uh, to put our census villager. So we have to build him just like a little house 
Now the problem with that is it's going to ruin the look of this book, I think. I don't know if putting like six doors and a villager here, if there's any way to kind of make that blend in. So the other option is we can put the uh, census villager inside this purple book, take out uh, like maybe like right here, take out this carpet, this slab, and put in um, a block of glass. We might have to do three because the doors need sky access in order to count as a door. So we can replace these three blocks with say purple glass and then the villager in there can activate a breeder that's down in the bottom book if that makes any sense right so he'll be sitting here doing his thing being like man we need more villagers we need more villagers and then down below in here the villagers are like hey something tells me we need more villagers let's make us some babies and then they do their thing, and then we end up with um, all kinds of villager offspring. I don't know what's going on here. I might, I might have accidentally taken those out. Can I, can I see daily? Yeah, I'm going to have to go up and fix that. But yeah, so that's the idea. So we can do our um, villager breeding right here, and then I believe it's this corner. Is it this corner? No, no. No. I think it's... I'm getting all disoriented. I think it's this corner that we need. Let me see here. Eh. Yeah, so it's going to be this corner that we take them out of, which is right here. So if we breed them here, we can just quickly run them. We'll dig a hole through here, like it is. And then out the mouth, and uh, then we can connect up there later. Whew. Yeah. So I think the best thing for me to do right now, and actually, I don't know if I showed you this. I do have some villagers here. Some nitwits. So basically, uh, we need to get them all into place. Uh, we need to get one guy out of here and up onto the very top, or up onto the, this middle book here. Uh, get him all positioned with doors, and then we can get the other three breeding. And I, what I might do here is I'm going to set up um, just a small little pit to keep these guys in for now, uh, and till we can get like a, a decent amount built up. Because uh, I'm going to do the Unary bit uh, villager breeder where these guys are all kind of like stuck in a hole on top of a fence, fence post. Um, it's a really good one. I've used it before. Uh, it produces lots of babies, and those babies have clean inventories, which is uh, going to become useful in the future. So I'm going to get started on this um, setup. I'm going to get uh, some of the villagers into place, and then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what I've worked out. Okay, so here we go. We got our nitwit up here, uh, just being a nitwit. He's here in front of six doors, and we have sky access to all those doors, I think. You know what I didn't check? I think we're good. I didn't check to see if that book up top was blocking anything, but it looks good. Um, so all of these doors will count as a valid door for a village. Um, so this guy in here is now should be putting out a signal that everyone needs to breed. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time for him to clue in and realize that he's in a village. So if it doesn't work right away, you know, just give it a chance. It could turn around. Um, so he's going to send out the signal and then down here, I got this little hut and uh, basically what this is is where we're going to be breeding up our initial villagers okay so this is about the easiest way you can get to move them from one area to the other so what I have here is powered rails to get them across and then we have a powered activator rail and some more powered rails and the activator rail what that's going to do if you don't know is it's going to rock the minecart and eject whatever is inside it so in this case it is a nitwit. So I'll give you a little demonstration of how that works. So moving villagers can be frustrating. Uh, the easiest way to do it is certainly in minecarts. Uh, currently, they have the power to control the path of the minecart, but that is going to change. So there you go. So 
it goes through, it ejects him when it hits the uh, activator rail. He does take a small amount of damage because his head is in this block. Um, you can not put these blocks in at first, the ceiling blocks, and uh, he shouldn't uh, take any damage. But don't worry about it. I mean, unless you beat beat your villagers up, uh, getting them like captured in the first place, like one little tick of uh, suffocation damage isn't going to do anything. And uh, when you're trying to get them into a room like this, you want to have it so they can't escape the room once they're free. Uh, but I do recommend using glass here because then they'll just pass through it. Oh, they, he's in the way. See, now this guy would be dead right now <laughs> if this was not glass. Oh, no. He moved out just as I went to point <laughs> at the glass with my pearl. Ugh. So, yeah, villagers can get a little annoying. Oh, he made it through. There we go. So, I can get my minecarts back. And now they're free now. See, I don't... I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think they will breed if they are uh, in minecarts. They might. Don't don't quote me on that. But I'm going to free them just in case. And I'm just going to take all of this. And I'll probably just e-pearl in there to grab it. Oh, of course I hit him. Of course. Eh. There we go. So now they are trapped. And uh, what I can do is go get some food for them. Uh, because the two ways that you can get villagers to breed are to uh, trade with them and feed them. Uh, and uh, usually it's beneficial to be able to do both because um, one one or the other like may take a little bit of time to kick in. But uh, unfortunately I can't trade with these guys. They are nitwits. Uh, I stole them because they were nitwits and I figured they'd be useless. Um, so all I can do is feed them. So I'm going to show you, uh, I have my, oh no you didn't, <laughs> ready to go. Um, sorry for that. I probably, I probably should never talk like that again. Um, and I've been working on, oh geez, oh geez. It's like a mob farm out there. I've been working on a pretty epic carrot farm. I'll give you a little look at it. Uh, because that's what I'm going to feed these guys is carrots. Um, I've done bread before, but that's a pain in the butt. You have to craft it and all that stuff. Uh, let me see here. I have some carrots. I'm just going to do four stacks, one stack per villager. That should be enough for now. Um, but yeah, if you see out here. Uh, I thought I could get my elytra to work. All of this is carrots. So when I harvest that next, I'll have uh, probably eight, eight or nine stacks of spare carrots after replanting. So that's what we're feeding them off of now. And eventually, once we get the breeder up and running, we will get some farmers doing this work for us so that we don't have to. Uh, don't, get, don't get me wrong. I'm not lazy. But if I can get a villager to do it, I will. So let's go up here and feed these guys. And uh, hopefully, we won't have to wait any time at all. Uh, they'll just start breeding away. So I'm going to go up here, light the top of this just in case. We don't want anything to spawn up here um, and potentially kill these guys. Oh, geez. Um, yep, that should be safe. So now I just want to chuck them in the carrots. And you don't have to worry about who gets what because they will share. Um, they spread them around back and forth. And hopefully with any luck, we will see hearts. Um, I'm not going to hold my breath because sometimes it does take a while, but ugh, are you kidding me? He must be in that block, that hit box. That's why it's getting me to place a torch. Okay, come on. Come on, hearts. You got this. Uh, we'll just give it a few seconds here. Let them trade a bit. And then hopefully we'll see hearts. And if not, I'm going to do a cut and I'll come back once they're breeding. Come on, guys. You can do it. So it should be known that uh, you can start a village with two villagers, but your best bet is to have three. One census villager and then two down here to do the breeding. Uh, we have one more than that, so we are in good shape. And I have them in this little tight room so that they don't walk to opposite corners because they do need to be in a certain proximity to each other to breed. Um, so this should be good. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on, you know you wanna.
And then every time you do one, you do one of these setups and you're waiting for them to, to see the hearts for the first time, all that's going through your head is, okay, what did I do wrong? What's not in the right spot? What do I need to fix? Uh, because that's, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but that's automatically my, my go-to thought is that I've messed something up. But I am quite confident that everything should work here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cut, uh, do a cut, and then I'll come back when they uh, start, start, you know, loving each other. All right, well, I'm glad I did that cut because this has been, geez, I don't know, four hours later, uh, and <laughs> I finally got some breeding to take place. Um, so basically, uh, at first I counted and I was like, okay, well, he is six blocks above like this block here which is about where their head is. No, their head is one below. So yeah, I assumed uh, that six blocks was enough distance. Turns out it's actually seven. And then I went up and moved him up one level onto this platform, and that wasn't enough. I couldn't figure it out. I was like, all these doors, I am positive these doors are legitimate. Um, I tried putting in these to like... Because like the way the, the game determines if a door is valid is... It checks to see how many sky blocks uh, are on one side versus non sky blocks on the other. Um, and you need five more uh, uh, uncovered or these kind, like <laughs> non transparent blocks on one side, and uh, only one sky block is needed on the other side. Uh, and then it'll, it'll assume that that's a house. So uh, I, I knew this was, this was good. And I couldn't figure it out. And so finally, I just said, maybe he's still one too low. So I lifted him one level up higher, and then they instantly started to breed. So we now have um, a bunch of villagers down here getting ready to make even more villagers. And I've given them a bunch of carrots. So they are good for a while. Like they probably each have two or three stacks of carrots. Um, so that'll, that'll leave them going for a little while. And my goal right now is to get, uh, I, want, I want eight. And then I can do one cell of my quad cell breeder. So eventually we're going to need 32 breeding villagers. Uh, but for right now, uh, eight will be enough for the first unit. So I'm going to let this group double. Um, and then I think that'll probably be it for today because I spent so much time just sitting here watching them and waiting. Urgh. I'm at a recording time. But uh, next episode, we'll come back and get them all into their, um, their, their permanent home. Uh, which will be built right here where the, they are right now. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and learned a little bit about villagers and breeding them. And uh, <laughs> I hope you liked it. So if you did, go down and thumb wrestle that like button to show your support. Subscribe if you're new here and you want to see how this project and others like it turn out. And also, in my description box, I have links to the Lionheart Discord where you can come and talk to all the content creators, ask questions. Uh, there's even a spot where you can share your videos with the community. Um, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, and there's also one more link that you can use to go down and vote for the member of the month. Um, so that is the Lionheart member that you uh, thought did the best work or just ended up being your favorite content creator from this server for the month of January. So go down and uh, have your voice heard. Make sure that you do vote because um, it's it's kind of like the People's Choice Awards. If the, people's, if the people don't vote, uh, is it really the people's choice? That's deep for you. <laughs> Anyways, this is Scoozy, and until next time, I'm saying peace. <laughs>